uh, one minute to David Serpa. Okay, thank you for giving me a shot at this. Uh, so one, one, one of the things that we need to think about with these warehouses, first off, we're already the largest concentration of warehouses in anywhere in the world. And that's because we are a shipping hub. We ship to Las Vegas, we ship to San Diego, we ship to LA, we ship to Orange County. And so we need to keep some of that wealth here in our community. And so what will I do? What will you do? Let's unionize Amazon, Target, Walmart, mm. uh, and let's start keeping some yeah. wealth in our communities. I would love, I already talked to the Teamsters about this last week. Yep. Let's partner with the Teamsters and let's teach our children a trade while they're in high school. So we're launching young union members into the world that can afford to launch, afford to buy a house, afford to start a family, and afford to buy groceries. Okay, great. Uh, let me make sure I'm getting all the names here right. Hold on one second. Ron. Ron Edwards, what would you do about the issue of warehouse saturation, quality of life, and air quality? Well, I think... One uh, minute. I think Gerald mentioned something um, that I'm kind of... Uh, I believe in. Uh, the people here, the citizens, they only have so much education. So you have to look at the demographic that you have. Uh, you can't apply for a job if you don't have the qualifications and skills. So those jobs are here. You can make good money in warehousing jobs. Sure. I work warehousing jobs. I work seven days a week, 12-hour days. Me and my wife, like I say, 40 years married. I, I have rental property. Uh, but it's some things we have to do, and society is going to have to do a course correction. Uh, one of the things is... Uh, I tell people, and this is my prescription, Dr. Ron Edwards, uh, <laughs> go to work, get married, stay married, mm. raise your own children. kids. Yes. Say it again. <laughs> go to work. <laughs> Pull your pants up and go to work. <laughs> get married. Amen. I got stay you. married. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. We got. We got. Uh, here's the next question: uh, Water infrastructure, energy infrastructure, healthcare infrastructure on your dollar, and then we sell it off to private enterprise. Yep. And then when private enterprise doesn't run it right, doesn't run our energy sector right, doesn't run our water right, we bail them out. Right. And I'm tired of bailing out companies like PG&E who uh, who have 85 manslaughter charges in the last 10 years mm -hmm. when nuclear energy is uh, the future. Um, so I would love to invest in nuclear energy for a fraction of what we sent to Ukraine in the initial aid package. We could have lined our coast and desalination plants, invested in nuclear energy, mm -hmm. and powered this shining city far into the future. Because if we're going to be a shining city on the hill, we've got to have the lights on, and we've got to have the water in the taps. Yeah. Amen. Same question to Ron Edwards. We've got one more round, then we're going to open this up to a few questions from the audience. And we're on time. We'll, we'll wrap up at 8 p.m. I got you. So, Ron Edwards, the condition of our roads, bridges, and infrastructure. This is a state and federal question. Need improvement. This is also should be a local question. Anyway, if elected, what are your solutions to improve our age infrastructure? And let me also say, just so you don't think, none of these questions I came up with, you all have no opinion where I stand. These are just questions that came in from the public, and these are the ones that got the most votes. Amen? Amen. Okay. Well, I'll start with energy and utilities. Uh, energy. All of our problems stem from energy. Mm -hmm. United States of America has more than enough energy. That's right. We have a surplus of energy. We can sell energy like crazy and have money to give everybody. Mm -hmm. Number two, our energy is the cleanest energy in the world. Mm -hmm. Cleaner than China, cleaner than Russia, name a place. It's the cleanest. Our technology is the best. Our people are the best. We're the hardest working people in the world. Reward us. Reward us. Reward us. Government, get out of our way and let us outwork the guy. I never saw my grandfather with his pants hanging on the ground. I never saw my father with his pants hanging on the ground. My father never, my son never saw me. My son graduated a straight A student, and calculus two, physics two. We got to get back to work. Thank you, Ron. Mm. Thank you. Love it. This is a school board question. We're almost wrapping up to open up to the public. What we do here in this country is we develop 
uh, water infrastructure, energy infrastructure, healthcare infrastructure on your dollar, and then we sell it off to private enterprise. Yep. And then when private enterprise doesn't run it right, doesn't run our energy sector right, doesn't run our water right, we bail them out. Right. And I'm tired of bailing out companies like PG&E who, uh, who have 85 manslaughter charges in the last 10 years mm -hmm. when nuclear energy is uh, the future. Um, so I would love to invest in nuclear energy for a fraction of what we sent to Ukraine in the initial aid package. We could have lined our coast and desalination plants, invested in nuclear energy, mm -hmm. and powered this shining city far into the future. Because if we're going to be a shining city on the hill, we've got to have the lights on, and we've got to have the water in the taps. Yeah. Amen. Same question to Ryan Edwards. We've got one more round, then we're going to open this up to a few questions from the audience. And we're on time. We'll, we'll wrap up at 8 p.m. I got you. So, Ron Edwards, the condition of our roads, bridges, and infrastructure. This is a state and federal question. Need improvement. This is also should be a local question. Anyway, if elected, what are your solutions to improve our age infrastructure? And let me also say, just so you don't think, none of these questions I came up with, you all have no opinion where I stand. These are just questions that came in from the public, and these are the ones that got the most votes. Amen? Amen. Okay. Well, I'll start with energy and utilities. Uh, energy. All of our problems stem from energy. Mm -hmm. United States of America has more than enough energy. That's right. We have a surplus of energy. We can sell energy like crazy and have money to give everybody. Mm -hmm. Number two, our energy is the cleanest energy in the world. Mm -hmm. Cleaner than China, cleaner than Russia, name a place. It's the cleanest. Our technology is the best. Our people are the best. We're the hardest working people in the world. Reward us. Reward us. Reward us. Government, get out of our way and let us outwork the guy. I never saw my grandfather with his pants hanging on the ground. I never saw my father with his pants hanging on the ground. My father never, my son never saw me. My son graduated a straight A student, and calculus two, physics two. We got to get back to work. Thank you, Ron. Mm. Thank you. Love it. This is a school board question. How can you protect students while on campus? How can, let me repeat that. How can you protect students while on campus without over policing our schools and without contributing to the school to prison pipeline? Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, we yeah, need more yeah. than a minute for that. Yeah. Well, you have two minutes. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's start with the uh, school prison pipeline. Yeah. Okay. Because that's very important. Well, as you know, research shows by third grade, they take those statistics to determine how many prisons need to be built, which is sad. One way we can eliminate the, uh, the school to prison pipeline, let's start with what we call uh, equity training. We, look, we need to look at who the people are we're putting before our children. Those people who are in those classrooms who are working with our children every single day. And I can give an example. As a former principal, child gets to school at 8 o'clock. At 8.05, they're in my office. Wait a minute, five minutes? Why is this child here? Well, they were disrespectful. Child's trying to explain why they were late for school. So some children, they're determined to be either aggressive or assertive. Mm -hmm. I, as the instructional leader, take the child back to the classroom. So that goes back to training our teachers. It is about what's equity. It is about being sensitive to our children. But we have to provide incentives for our children. We need to be motivated. We need to encourage our children. And for me, it's all about building relationships with our kids. When your students know you, that you care about them, they're going to bend over backwards because they know you're going to do everything that you can to protect them. Now, let's talk about safe schools. Since I got 30 seconds. Oh, I'm out of time. 30 seconds. I got 30 seconds. Every, first of all, because that is one of, our, one of my platforms, safe schools. In order for our parents to feel comfortable sending their children every day and our students feeling comfortable being there every day, we have to make sure that they feel safe. What does that look like? Well, we have fire drills, 
we have earthquake drills, but we also have to hold our students accountable. Mm. The bullying has to stop. Yep. And I am a firm believer, as a current board Time. member, I want a ban on cell phones during the instruction of day. They're taking photos and putting them on the internet. Yeah. It's inappropriate. Time. Thank you. This is a really important question. As a pastor, this is one of the most compelling questions that we've asked tonight. How can you protect students while on campus without over-policing our schools? And without contributing to the school to prison pipeline, Susan Smith. Uh, thank you. That's a big, big question. Yep. Um, <coughs> we safety and security is one of the things that we on the school board take very seriously. We have um, increased security measures at all of our schools. If you've been to school lately, you know that the fences are a little higher. We don't want to create a prison-like look, but we don't want people to get in either. Uh, when you check into a school, you need to go through the office, check in with the office. You can't just walk on campus anymore and just be there. So we're trying to keep our students safe by um, making what you might call a barrier to entry so that only people that really have business in the school can be there. We also um, are talking about uh, name tags. I think in the school shooting in Georgia, you heard about... Uh, name tags that um, where you can press a button on the back of your tag to call for assistance and they said that was one of the factors that got assistance there quicker and i think in any kind of a situation we want assistance rapidly a rapid response um, we do have um, a police we do work with the sheriff's deputies they have a presence on our campuses and we have used them and um, I think, that, I think that we need that without overdoing it. I'll just say that. We don't want them to feel like they're being watched all the time and there's always something in there, but we want to keep our students safe and secure, and we want parents to feel that they can be confident sending their kids to school that they're going to be safe. So now, school to prison pipeline, I'm barely getting started on number two. One of, one of the things we can do to help our school to prison pipeline, the thing that keeps you out of prison is education and a job. And we work with career technical education in our schools. We have several programs that students can in, get into in high school that will help them to get a job when they get out of high school. So, you know, we prepare kids for college too, but not all kids are going to go to college. Those that don't go to college need a career that they are prepared for. And we work a lot on that preparation for career. I'm sorry, I stopped looking over at you. No, you're doing great. This is the last question. This is the last question. Amen? Yeah. 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 You can when you have your time in a minute. Yeah, I will sign a cruise going right on through to Hector. So, Elena, if you'd start, what else do you want us to know about you as we head to the November 5th election? Share your closing statement or your closing argument, and I won't ask the question again so everyone can just go. Sometimes the best man for a job is a woman. All right. <laughs> I got you there. <laughs> Edwards. Um, and um, I guess I, I wanted to also say that um, I also am a parent and grandparent. My children went through these schools. I've lived in Myrna Valley since 1990. Um, I only am running against one other person. She's This, is, this month is her first year anniversary. So she's new to our city. Um, I've been in the chamber of the city council for at least the last 10 years. If I'm not, uh, I also watch the City Council, the Planning Commission, the um, College Board. I um, listen to the head folks, the other meetings, and the supervisors sometimes. I'm very invested, I'm engaged in government. I, um, I enjoy what I'm doing. I've, it's been both an honor and a pleasure to serve you the last two years. And um, ask, I'm knocking on doors and I'm asking that if I've done a good job, reelect me. Um, I also want to say that I currently represent the city in the school jo um, task force, joint task force at the Western Riverside Council of Governments and also the, um, the Library Commission, the Environmental Historical Preservation Commission, and those are all my assignments as the council member. And I am also want to share my endorsements. I was recently endorsed by the Democratic Party, by the Riverside Sheriff's Association, Cal Fire, um, the Council of Labor um, the Carpenters, I am supported by my colleagues, both um, Councilmember Ed Delgado and Mayor Pro Tem Shaylinda Bernard. 
I'm also endorsed by our uh, assembly members, um, Jose Medina and Sabrina Cervantes. Um, Jose is, of course, um, retired, as well as um, our supervisor, Extreme Guterres, um, also um, endorsed by Latinas Lead and the Honor, who are supporters of the LGBTQIA plus community. So I have nearly all the endorsements um, because I've been doing the work and I um, honestly, it's just been my honor to serve you. So. Yeah. Well, same question. Um, <laughs> I was ready for you to prompt me with the question. No worries. Um, I, I'm running for city council here in District Three because I care a lot about Marina Valley. I care about a lot. Uh, I care a lot about the city that I was grown up in that has shaped me. This is the city where my mother lives, my grandmother, my nephews go to school. I care a lot about Marina Valley, and I care a lot about District Three. Again, I've spent the last 10 years, the better part of 10 years, across each level of government making sure that I had the credibility and the confidence to strongly step into city government and lead our city in the next five to 10 years. We need leadership that has strong vision and bold planning. One thing that you wouldn't know, that was your question, um, the last time Reno Valley, the first time actually Reno Valley elect, elected a black man to council was in 1994. I would be the, sec the second black man elected to this city in our city's history. Reno Valley is the fastest growing city in the Inland Empire, and it has the largest black population yes, in the Inland Empire. Representation does matter. It mattered to me when I was a little boy, um, and it matters to the little boys out there as well. So I'm running for City Council District 3, again, the only candidate that made the time to show up tonight, and I look forward to answering your other questions after this, because again, I care. I care about our city, and I'm at a point in my life where I feel like Again, working across every level of government, I'm ready and confident to step into city leadership, to step into city leadership and hopefully lead our city into a prosperous five to ten next year. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Your closing statement, Amen. Your closing statement. I want to say I, I'm a planning commissioner. I'm a humble person. I work two jobs. I work at State of Brothers and I work at Lowe's. I know what people are going through as my job as mayor will be to keep everybody in this room safe. Make sure you have a chance to live your American dream in this city. I know for the past 30 years I've gone to council meetings, I presented ideas, I advocated ideas, 26 of them have been adopted. I go to councils throughout this county presenting ideas because I care about the people in our community. Because it not only does not affect, uh, it affects everybody. And, and the thing about me that you may not know, people say, how in the world you do all this and you're a planning commission? I because I care. I make it my business because I listen to people who come through my line, self-checkout, bagging groceries, what's on their mind. They tell me anyway, but I don't want to hear it. They're like, hey, well, I'm the my granddaddy going to get killed by whatever. But, but the point is, I care about you guys in here. I'm gonna, like I said, I want to make sure that your, this generation, the next generation, will have opportunities that we can only dream of. Because it's, it's not going to, I may not be here to, to, to see it, but they will. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's something that I'll be proud of, to make sure that all of you, and like I said, that you're safe. That's no more important as a mayor, is to make sure that you're safe. And that, I, that's something I will promise that I will do. Mm -hmm. All right. David, sir, for your closing statement. Uh, okay, thank you everybody. Uh, so first off, my campaign slogan when we started this thing 20 months ago, we decided it was going to be it must be love. Because why else would you do something like this? Uh, hate is not going to do. Uh, so we're going to need to focus on love. We also have on every sign, it's not left versus right, it's time to unite. Now in 2018, I went through a mental and spiritual crisis, which led, led to a mental and spiritual breakthrough. And I checked myself into the VA in February of 2018. Mm -hmm. um, because I believe that, you know, when I found out that I was autistic, and I found out that I'm bipolar too, and we get stressed out in this mental, our mental health issues that, uh, that are exacerbated by this culture, it's because if your hair is on fire, you should probably act like your hair is on fire. And there's a lot of us who are struggling mentally because our society is not conducive to mental well-being. So I focus on things that I feel like are common sense, water, energy, defense, healthcare, education. 
Last night when we were at an event, uh, a Democrat stood up in the front row and she said, I just want to shake your hand. You sound like a Democrat. So I shook her hand. And then the next question, a man stood up in the back row with a Trump hat on. And he said, I want to let you know that David Serpa is the hardest working candidate in Riverside County. He's knocking on doors. He's at every event. And I said, you know what? That's a good night. If I could get a Democrat and a guy in a Trump hat to agree on something, I feel like we're doing something right. And so, um, you know, I too have been working two jobs. I've been driving Uber. There have been times that I've driven to a campaign stop, and I don't know how I'm going to get back. So I've got to drive Uber to get gas, cash it out, and then to get and head back home. Um, my grandpa passed away. My sister left the state. My good friend Rick is going to be leaving the state. My mom had a stroke yesterday. Um, I can tell you, this has been one of the roughest two years of my life. But like I said, I'm willing to die for it. So thank you guys. Amen. Amen. Ron Edwards, your closing statement. All right, guys, you got choices to make. It's between me and Corey Jackson. This California state is a beautiful state. We're going to lose our state. It's not going to be beautiful. It's going to be a hill hole. It's going to be like San Francisco. It's going to be like Oakland. It's going to be like parts of L.A. I lived in Watts, Compton, and L.A. We don't want it like that. Gavin Newsom and these Democrats took $320 billion from you. Number one, they didn't give you a receipt. Number two, they didn't give you no change. What they raised me at when I lived in, in Compton, L.A., and Watts, go to the store, boy, give me a list. I go pick up something. They give me the money. I come back, I give them what they told me to go get, I give them their change, and I give them a receipt. Gavin Newsom hasn't given you a receipt, and he hasn't given you any change. We don't have a shortage of money in this, in this country and in this California. We got a shortage of men that's able to judge. We got a shortage of men that fear God. We got a shortage of men that love truth. We got a shortage of men that hate covetousness, that can't be bribed, and we got a shortage of men that have God's spirit in them. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Love it. Ruth, Ruth Self Williams, your closing statement. Yes. Your closing statement. Okay, thank you. All right. First of all, I have been here for 34 years. I was recruited to Moreno Valley in 1990 with 14 years of teaching experience. It was the fastest growing city in the country at the time. Mm -hmm. I came here and it was a culture shock for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as far as minorities, I looked around. Hmm. Okay. The city has transitioned tremendously. Yeah. Tremendously. Um, what I have to tell you, my motto is standing for our students. And the reason why I'm passionate about being a school board member is because I have two children who graduated from this district. Marcel graduated in 1994 from Canyon Springs High School. Miranda graduated in 1996 from Canyon Springs High School. I taught in this district. I was an assistant principal in this district. And then I went on to become a principal, but I was recruited by Riverside Unified. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what I want to say about my role as a trustee it is to ensure that our students have safe schools, that we increase student achievement, that also that we provide high quality research-based instruction, and last but not least, accountability is important for me. How we spend our dollars. We as board members make decisions about our resources, how those dollars are spent. And for me, it needs to be in the center, which is the children, classroom first. You never, ever touch this area. Let's see where else we can cut. But our children deserve to have the best. And I'm going to continue to do that as a board member in Trustee Area 5, putting our children first. Thank you, Sister Ray. Thank you. Susan Smith, your closing statement. Well, thank you. I really uh, can prepare a closing statement, but I'm happy to be here to say a few things. As I said, my background is in education. That's where I've always been. That's where my heart is. And my heart is there because... It's with the students. Sometimes when I go into classrooms now as a board member, I feel that little, you know, maybe I should still be there. Maybe I still, because I love it so much. 
I love working with those kids. I never became an administrator because I just love what I was doing in the classroom, working with the kids directly. Uh, nothing against the administrators, that just was not where I wanted to be. So um, some of my goals for the district, one of them is, said, is to focus on finances. We have had a financial crisis, if you don't know it, in Moreno Valley Unified School District this past year. And we have been working hard to overcome that. We had somebody from the county come out and give a presentation at our board meeting because we were on the verge of having the county come over and audit every single expenditure we made because our money had been spent so poorly over the last few years. So finances are very important. We can't educate kids if we don't spend the money in the right place. And for me, that's spending in the classroom. Um, we focus on college and career readiness. Let's prepare kids for college. Let's prepare them for careers. Let's give them some place to go other than other than working in a warehouse, really. Let's find ways that they can be successful in life. Uh, chronic absenteeism, I think I mentioned earlier, we must overcome our tendency to chronic absenteeism and help those students that have problems. Those students that we need to focus on are our homeless youth, our foster youth, our English learner, and our African American students. Those kids have been underachieving for a long time, and we need to put our resources with them and to help those students wherever we can. We need safe schools. We need to. Um, time, Susan. Go one Thank song. you. No, you're doing great, but time. Thank you so anyway, much. I look forward to being your representative in area two. Thank you, Susan Smith. Thank you. Two, we've got two left, and then we're asking you guys, we are on time. We are going to open it up for questions. You've stayed this long. We're going to open up for some questions for the candidates. Uh, Patsy D. Brown, your closing statement. All right. Well, I can say that you can call me Dr. Patsy Brown, shoot from the hip Brown. I'm very plain spoken. I'm very straightforward. I think in the political arena, it's too much rhetoric. And I sat here and heard statistics being thrown out that I know for myself are inaccurate. What you need is somebody that's going to cut through the chase and tell you exactly what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, why they're going to do it, where they're going to do it. I've been on the streets of Moreno Valley dealing with the homeless, dealing with those that have uh, that, uh, unhoused, as you would. I'm a pastor. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. My, all my grandchildren went to school here. I've, I've, I've been implementing innovative programs as a citizen. Of, of this city. I believe I'm the best candidate because we need at this time people that cut through the rhetoric. All this political rhetoric that's going on is not getting us anywhere. Moreno Valley is a good city. It's a rich city. Our resources are not being spent as well as it could be. And I believe that I have a voice to make sure that you understand what is coming out of my mouth. I'm not going to try to sway your mind with throwing out a whole bunch of statistics that mean absolutely nothing. We need better roads. We need better home uh, 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 homeless uh, programs. We need more housing. We need better ties up with the education department and with the city. And I have worked and done those. I can put my, uh, uh, what to say, money where my mouth is. So I believe that I am the best candidate for this time and for this city, Moreno Valley. There you go. Mm. Actor Diaz, some would say, say the best for last actor, so make it great. Your closing statement. Yeah, well, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, one of my biggest problems is that I'm a workaholic. So uh, I started working at the age of seven, helping my parents out uh, to bring money to the house and also going, going to school at the same time. Um, as a teenager, um, I was picking strawberries, potatoes, tomatoes. And work, I was working in the fields um, and uh, trying to make some money to go to school. I come from a large family, 11. I'm the youngest one. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, my parents didn't have a TV back then. <laughs> and uh, I'm the only one that was actually had the opportunity to go to school here. Um, I went to college, I went to university in Fulton. I have a degree in criminal justice, I have one in political science, and also in business administration as well. So I became a business owner uh, when I was uh, like 25 years old. And uh, now, I mean, I'm a I'm a real estate broker, I'm, I'm a mortgage broker, an insurance broker, a body shop owner, and also 
I used to be a restaurant owner as well for uh, about 10 years in the city of Myrtle Valley. Restaurant industry is the toughest part, so don't ever go up to that <laughs> You have to marry the business. Right. And uh, I have two boys. I got married. I have two boys. And uh, um, let me tell you that uh, with the, uh, my educational skills in different industries, I believe that I have what it takes to lead the city. Uh, I believe that I have the uh, uh, all the tools, the necessary tools to uh, to work with all of you guys. And I know that if we work together, we can make a better Murray Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hector. Thank you very much. Why don't yes. you give them all a hand up, Chris? I'll make my very brief uh, statement now, and then I'm going to open up to questions. <laughs> Then I'll do a 30 second call to action and a benediction. Amen? Yeah, that was good. Uh, 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 Donald, Trump is, Donald Trump is not in the room tonight. Right? No. Vice President Harris is not in the room tonight. Right? It seems to me that these candidates, all of them across the spectrum, it seems that they care about what they're talking about. It seems that they're passionate. You heard, I think, one side say that they weren't necessarily justice warriors in particular or environmentalists in particular. You heard another side talk about being pro-union. And so I think that tonight is an opportunity at the local level here for us to take a look at what the candidates have to say and to take them at their word that they mean what they say, that they care about the community, uh, and for you to evaluate yourself, your spirit, use your spirit discernment, uh, take a look at where they really stand, dig deep on your own. Um, and I'll just do the call to action now. The call to action is to vote. Yes. Amen? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the call to action is to vote, and not just your pocket, but to vote your community, vote your heart, vote your spirit, yes. vote your God, yes. vote your conscience, yes. amen? Yes. So the call to action is, is to vote, and really dig deep, get past the words and find out where they really stand, each of them, and those whom you can get behind. And with that, before the benediction, we'll open this up to four questions. Who has questions tonight? Uh, uh, starting with you. However, um, Moreno Valley you, was slated to have the largest warehouse development in the, world. In the Inland Empire. 40 plus million uh, square feet of warehouse space. It's a place called World Logistics, so forth and so on. That never happened. However, the logistics center is open. Well, hold on. However, the 40 plus million square feet of warehouse was built in Riverside from Hunter Park. Mm -hmm. North Riverside, all the way to Ryder in Paris, and from Peacock by the airport all the way to Barton. That area is called Meridian. That's where the warehouses are. They're not mainly in Marina Valley. So what you need to focus on, we need to focus on, is where is the packaged good logistic industry going? What is that going to be in the future? The jobs that are going to come there. Amazon states that it wants half a billion of its packages to, do their, to be delivered to the home by, drone. by drones. Oh. Mm. That's called the last mile. So if we don't alert our people to get on the 21st century job skills, we will lose those industries. We will lose those jobs. And what's the question? This so is the a great question point. Is, what's the question? Yeah. What can you do as government officials and leaders of education to prepare our youth in this city for the 21st century job economy? Yeah, that's good. Create a new Great job. job. There was nobody who was a supply chain technician, maintenance mechanic, automation mechanic. Those are all the different titles that they have. Nobody has had ever been that before. So what we did was you you get industry in the room. You call Target. You call Home Depot. You call Amazon and you say, oh, would you guys come over and sit down? So we'd sit, the, sit them down in a um, hollow square, put the big post-its on the door and it says, okay, well, what do you need? You say, I need somebody that knows electro uh, electronics. Okay, put electronics. Well, I need somebody that knows, that can read like schematics, so we put the schematics. And so we get the whole list of what they needed to know. Uh, uh, the council member said, okay, well, saying that we should link up the same way as, as Craig was saying with Amazon and create that uh, uh, curriculum to create those career paths to those positions. Because they have economic mobility. But I, like again before, we're surrounded, but people can't get to those jobs. We have to go other places, Norco, Riverside. We have Reno Valley College right here, which is underutilized. Our career tech uh, uh, education programs do not reflect what's in the community. We've been talking about logistics uh, uh, 
of, of training facilities, it's time to do it. When I'm mayor, we're going to have it. When I'm working with uh, the council member right here, we're going to make it happen. We're going to stop talking about it, and we're going to do it. Time. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. We're going to take two more for this question and move on to the next question. 21st century jobs in a city where there seems to be a whole lot of 20th century training. Anybody else have a comment about that? Yes, um, so uh, my statistics are incredibly accurate. Um, that's mainly what I do is I study, Google what I wrote or what I've said here tonight, and call me on my cell phone. It's on my website. Let me know if there's anything that I said that's wrong. Um, we have a fake economy. It's based on sales, shipping, and service. We sell crap that we didn't make, we ship crap that we didn't make, and we service people while they're buying crap that we didn't make here. Amazon, the largest employer, or the second largest employer in the world, just hired 750,000 robots. Mm -hmm. Hired, right? Bought 750,000 robots. Um, AI is going to change the world. Um, we are going to be facing massive unemployment. That's the truth. We have to give Americans owner ownership of this economy uh, by bringing about something that I call the American dividend, which would uh, give everyone a monthly payment based on the previous quarter's gross domestic product. Because if America is doing well, Americans should do well. Just like Alaska pays an oil dividend, just like natives pay uh, a check based on how well their casinos are doing, that's what we need to be doing in America based on what we're doing so that we can free up more people to have more financial freedom in their life. Thank you, David. One more comment on this question. I want to ditto uh, Councilwoman Bonka, and I'm sorry, and the young man. Justin next Jackson from her. City Council District 3. Okay. There you go. Jackson, uh, Jackson, uh, Jackson, 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 how come I didn't remember that? Word. We'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, my uh, former background was a uh, As you know, uh, some schools, districts have passed uh, laws that um, if a student is uh, identifying as transgender in school, that the parents must be notified that it's gone to court and found to be unconstitutional. We don't do that in Moreno Valley. I feel like students need somebody to talk to, and I hope that that person will always be their parents, that the first person they feel they can confide in will be their parents. But if they don't feel comfortable confiding in their parents and they instead confide in a teacher or other school employee that they feel close to, then I don't think that school employee should be forced to notify the parents. That is not our job to come between that parent student student relationship. Students need a safe place to be. And sometimes that safe place I hope parents to be aware of a student was transgender. They wanted them identified by whatever is on the birth certificate. You also have students who are considered non-binary. They don't identify with either sex, boy or girl. What's important is that it is about the kids. Kids need to have a safe place to go. Some are not safe in their own homes. They need a place where they feel safe. On top of that, we develop relationships with our kids. They are, many of them, attached to an adult, they're attached to certain friends, and we, because of confidentiality, there are certain things we cannot share. And whatever is on that birth certificate, we don't alter any records. That's against the law. So whatever's on that record is it. But you do have students who will say, well, I prefer to be called you know, he, she, it, what have you. It is not for us, we're not the parents, to question it. So, as far as this board, we are talking about implementing a policy. Where it is about protecting our kids first. Our, we have children who are committing suicide. They need to feel valued. They need to feel wanted. They need to feel respected. And I personally, having been a school administrator, our kids are happy when they come to school.